Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to Ask the King episode 40. Keep in mind this is part 2, so if you missed out on part 1, be sure to head over there and check it out if you're watching this on YouTube, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into the questions because we've got a ton of them, alright? And again, I have to reiterate because we had a little bit of nonsense going on in the stream chat during the show... I'm only taking legit questions. Do not submit ridiculous raffle questions about stupid parody videos and negative nonsense. And phrase your questions correctly. I see people making statements instead of questions. Please, I'd like the Q&A session to be pretty good this time. So please be a little bit more careful with your questions, okay? All right. <clears throat> Next question is from Prince Sephiroth. And he asks the following. He says, Dear Chef Philardi, Oh, boy. I guess I make SpaghettiOs. Uh, I heard you say that you're bringing back Cooking with the King. That's awesome. Now, before we move on, yes, it's official. I This was one of the big announcements in my uh, announcement video this past weekend that I am bringing back Cooking with the King. In fact, I already have. This past week, I made an episode of Cooking with the King where I made simple French toast and turkey bacon. That is live on the King of Hate vlogs. So if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely do so. It was very popular. People were flipping out that the series is back. They're very happy about that. And the way that I'm going to do it is I'm planning on, uh, excuse me, pretty much doing it about once a month. It's not something I'm going to be doing all the time. But about once a month, I'm going to try to make a certain food item that I haven't made before. Now, I actually did make French toast before, but that was that period of time when I was only uploading videos to Blip TV. And that video has very long time ago been deleted three years ago that was deleted off the internet completely so i said here's a great opportunity for me to remake the dish so that people on youtube can see it and that's live on the king of hate vlogs right now so now back to the question he says i think that this is a great idea it's going to be fun and hilarious to watch you try and probably fail a lot of the time uh to cook or bake something and by the way he's right because i burnt the turkey bacon <laughs> regarding this i was wondering if you'd ever considered oops if you'd ever considered uh, cooking certain recipes that your fans sent in for you to try. I would love to see you try to bake my grandmother's macaroni and cheese. Just an idea that struck me. What do you think? Looking forward to seeing your content in 2014. Um, here's, here's the premise of the series, because I think a lot of people didn't know this, because they never watched the original videos from way back when my original vlogging channel, which was the King of Hate HD, which I haven't used in years, okay? The premise of poorly cooking with the king, because that's the actual name of the series, poorly cooking with the king, is that if you're a person like me, you're on the go, you constantly have a busy schedule, you need to get from point A to point B, you need to do stuff, you don't have a lot of time to cook, all right? You can't sit there in the kitchen for an hour a day cooking a meal for yourself. Cooking with the king or poorly cooking with the king is a way to show you how to do quick, relatively inexpensive, but still delicious meals. And that's what they are. So you some breakfast items, some lunch items, some dinner items. That's what the series has always been about. So I would love fan suggestions, but it sounds to me like baked mac and cheese is something that takes quite a long time and quite a lot of preparation to make, which isn't the premise of the series. So if people out there have suggestions for, oh, this, this is a quick recipe. It takes 20 minutes. It's been in my family my whole life. Check it out. That's the kind of stuff I would love to try out. But not, oh, by the way, here's my home, homemade meatloaf uh, recipe that takes four hours of preparation. has 32 ingredients and costs 50 bucks to make. That's the kind of stuff I'm staying away from, okay? So, sure, if you would like to send me recipe suggestions for quick and easy food... And it's, you know, especially if it's maybe cultural to your family, a family tradition, I'd love to try that stuff out. So shoot that stuff my way, whether it's darksidefilthotmail.com, tweet me a link to the stuff on Twitter, at they call me DSP, all kinds of ways that you can reach me for that kind of stuff, okay? All right, <clears throat> excuse me. The next question is from Fantasy86, and he asks, Phil, are you going to continue to play retro replay games in 2014? My suggestion of games you missed and really should play are Final Fantasy IX, Zelda Twilight Princess, uh, God of War II, Donkey Kong Country 2, ba and Banjo-Kazooie. Um, I would be really happy to see a playthrough of any of those games, again, from Fantasy 86. Fantasy 86, I never stopped doing retro replay. Like, I don't know if you realize this, but the ongoing Fallout 3 playthrough, which will resume, is a retro replay. Blue Dragon is a retro replay. The only difference here 
is that I don't call it retro replay anymore because if you remember correctly, a change that I tried in 2013 and it didn't work out too well was that I was going to make custom thumbnails for my playthroughs and put especially retro replay and I was going to put those on every video as I uploaded them. Now, YouTube and their in all their wisdom completely screwed up their website uh, in early 2013 and removed the ability to make a custom thumbnail link to your video uh, for a while. And so what I would have had to do is add the custom thumbnail afterwards. But again, YouTube and all their wisdom, the website takes hours on end for a custom thumbnail to show up on a video if you don't do it while it's uploading. So what was happening was I was trying to put thumbnails on the videos and the people weren't seeing them for 8 to 10 hours and they were all complaining, where are the custom thumbnails? I'm, like, I'm sorry, I'm trying. It's not working. It's YouTube. YouTube fucked something up. And so I finally just got fed up. I think it was around May. I said, fuck this. I'm not going to stress out and worry about doing all this shit when you, it's YouTube keeps changing their site and screwing with their site and changing the fact that you can't do it anymore. So I stopped doing it. And quite honestly, since I stopped doing the custom thumbnails, no one really complained. But I think because I stopped doing the custom thumbnails that said Retro Replay, people were like, oh, what happened to Retro Replay? Any game that I played in the past year that's an older game that basically I'm replaying for YouTube has been a Retro Replay. So the God of War playthrough that I did, the Uncharted playthrough that I did, the Blue Dragon playthrough I'm doing now, they're all Retro Replays. It never went anywhere. It still exists. Okay? Now, as for some of your suggestions, <clears throat> Final Fantasy IX is a game I will eventually tackle. I don't know if I'm going to do it anytime soon simply because we're already doing so many JRPGs this year. Zelda Twilight Princess, I would like to play eventually. I don't know how I would because obviously I would have to hook up, I guess, my old Wii to play it, which I have no desire of doing. I know the Wii U has a Wii emulator. Maybe I could do it that way. I don't know. Um, but I just played Wind Waker last year, so I don't know if I want to jump into another Zelda game right away. God of War 2, same thing. I just played God of War, uh, uh, what was it, God of War, was it Ascension? whatever it was called, and then I played God of War last year. People were like, we're all God of War out. Stop playing God of War. So I did. Uh, Donkey Kong Country 2, again, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is coming out soon, so I don't want to play the same kind of game. And Banjo-Kazooie is the one on that entire list that I never played. I don't know what the game's even like. I just know it's like a 3D platformer. Um, but how the hell would I play that? Think about it. How would I play Banjo-Kazooie? Go buy a Nintendo 64? Is it, I guess I could maybe get an emulator and play it on an emulator. I don't know. Some of those games I'm very interested in, but being the stuff that's coming out this year, it may not be the best time to play them, okay? All right. Next question here is from JTFL2000. His question is as follows. Hey, Phil. Since you're going to move this year, does that mean that your condo tour video series is going to be over? I've been a huge fan of your condo tours because I get to see what it what it is and what's new since the last time that you did one. I hope you'll keep doing it and thanks. Now, wait a minute. I just want to think about this. If I move out of this condo to a new location outside of Connecticut, will I keep doing condo tour videos in this condo? I think pretty much everyone watching this video can figure out the answer to that question. No, I can't. It's impossible. You want to come back and see the empty condo? I probably will. Once I clear out the condo and all the shit is moved to Seattle, I probably will take like a photo inside of here of the empty condo and say, gee, before and after, remember when I moved in and I made the video? And now I can do a video of me moving out, right? But uh, yeah, when I move, the condo tour videos will end, but it's going to start a whole new line of videos of the new place. Me walking through the new place, showing you all the rooms, the different stuff when it's empty when we first move in then after we actually unpack everything and we set stuff up then as we buy new furniture and appliances and things for it i can show you my new setup for streaming and everything and how that's going to work there hopefully i'll get a new pc like i'm planning to do so i can actually do a dual monitor setup and actually do real pc gaming with dual screens and i have to worry about my video uh, in, uh my capture device crashing or whatever it's going to be immense. It's going to be a ton of video footage from the new place. It's going to be a whole new world of, of exciting entertainment and, and, and info for everyone. And so that's why it's another thing. Even though I'm moving and there's some negatives, there's going to be some tremendous positives. All the new variety of stuff I'm going to be able to talk about, about the new location I'm moving, the house and everything. It's going to be great. So I'm really looking forward to it. There will be a new series. I don't know. It probably won't be called Condo Tour. Maybe it'll be called something else, but we'll see. Okay. The next question is, get to it here. Mm 
can see here. Spear point six six six. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Spear point six six six, and he asked the following: Hey Phil, I have a question about game length. As you know, a lot of times there are people who are turned off by shorter games. It's become a norm for people to skip certain games simply because they are not that long. I, I actually totally understand what he's saying. There's some games I've played over the past few years, and because the game's only five hours long, everyone's like, fuck it, that game sucks. Like, now wait a minute. What if it's the best five hours of gameplay you've ever had, right? But anyway, I digress. The question. He says, however, on the flip side, can a game have too much content? A game like Skyrim, I invested at least 60 hours in, but could never bring myself to finish the game. Same thing with Fallout as well. Is it possible for a game to have too much content, resulting in faster burnout with the game? Thanks, I've been a long-time fan. Alright, so... The answer to that question is... It, it depends on the kind of gamer that you are. Because there's three different kinds of gamers, alright? There's the kind of gamer that, if you're playing the game and you're enjoying the hell out of it... You're going to want to do every little piece of content in the game. So regardless if a game is 60 hours long, as long as you're enjoying the game and there's a tremendous amount of content, you're probably going to say that's a plus, that's not a negative. Then there's the kind of gamer that says, you know what, I don't like the side content, the superfluous content. I just like to go right through the main storyline and that's it. So for someone like that, you could probably beat Skyrim, the main storyline, within like 10 hours. And so people would say, Skyrim's not a 60-hour game, it's a 10-hour game with 50 hours of side content. It's up to you if you want to play it. I didn't play it, but I still enjoyed the game. I like the main story. Now there's a third kind of gamer who, when they spend $60... They need to explore every facet of the game, regardless of if they like the game, if it's something that they're actually enjoying doing. They're just the kind of person, I spent 60 bucks, I got to do all the content in the game because I got to get my money's worth. And honestly, I think that's the wrong uh, uh, approach to a game. If you're not enjoying the side content of a game like Skyrim or Fallout, then don't do it. Just do the main quest line, and in most of these games, you can still beat the game by just doing the main quest line. For example, games like uh, a Fallout and Skyrim actually scale the level of the enemies you're fighting to your level. So, even if you're fighting the final boss on your lower level, and if you had done 50 hours of side content, you'll probably still be able to beat them. It's not like you need all this overpowered equipment and side grinding in order to, to beat the game. So, I don't understand, in a case like that, that people could complain and say game's too long. Now, however, there's a flip side to it. I personally know a couple people, I'd say a few people, who've come to me and said they actually don't like Grand Theft Auto V that much. I know. Oh my God, huge controversy. How could someone not love Grand Theft Auto V? It's a lot of people's game of the year for 2013. But bear with me. <clears throat> the reason they don't like it it's because they feel that the story, the mandatory missions that you must play for the story, okay, unfortunately, just don't adhere to a coherent enough story that they don't feel like side content. So there are three main characters, three protagonists in Grand Theft Auto V. What if you really like Franklin, you really hate Trevor, and you're kind of ambivalent to Michael? Well... That means when you're playing with Franklin's missions, which are required to get through the game, you'll love the game. When you're playing Trevor's missions, you'll hate the game. When you're playing with Michael, you're kind of, eh, you're a little bored. So, if that's the case, and keep in mind, the campaign of Grand Theft Auto V is what? Mandatory 15 hours. If out of the 15 hours of gameplay, you only enjoy 5, I can completely understand why you say this game is too long. I only wanted to be Franklin, so 5 hours of gameplay that I loved was great. And I can understand that. I, I, there are three, three people in particular that I know who haven't beaten Grand Theft Auto V. Because they said it's just too drawn out, it's too long, all of a sudden you get sidetracked doing something different outside from what seems to be the main plot, and you're bored of it, and you don't want to do it anymore. And I can understand that. So really what you're going to find uh, the best games, what they, they're able to do, is to give you the option, excuse me, my stomach just rumbled, the option of either playing through this quest line that's very strict and adherent to the story, and you can beat it quickly, or a ton of optional side content. It's when that side content that's not really critical to the story of the game becomes mandatory to do before you can beat the game, that's when you go off the rails. And I think that a lot of people do think that maybe Grand Theft Auto V did that. Me, personally, I loved the whole game. I loved all three characters. So for me, it was just like 
give me more, give me more, give me more. I couldn't, I couldn't wait to play more of the game. I, I was just enjoying the hell out of everything that I did in it. But I could see from the perspective of someone else who doesn't necessarily like all the characters that you get stuck doing shit that you don't like just to beat the game. And then in that case, you could say the game's too long. It was padded. I understand that. So there's two perspectives. It's going to depend on the kind of gamer that you are, I think. But it could be a negative. All right. The next question is from... Let's see here. Next question is from Ninja Assassin. And actually, it's funny because he doesn't spell it that way. Probably because someone already took the name. Ninja Assassin. S-I-A-N-10. And he says, Phil, are you, is it still capable? Like, is it still possible to buy stuff from your shop? Now, if you're watching this video right now, you might be saying to yourself, what the hell is he talking about? Phil has a shop? Yes. <laughs> Way back when, we're talking like, I think it was either 2009 or 2010. When really, it was the, those burgeoning years where I was just gaining my popularity on YouTube and I was becoming a known person for gaming and Let's Plays. People were coming to me and saying, Phil, we'd love to buy a piece of merch from you. Can you sign something for us? Can you have something with your logo on it? We'd love it. Like, like for example, dun, 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 right? How long have I had this sign, right? And they said, we want stuff like that for Christmas. And the, I remember one year, I think it was 2009, I didn't have anything. And people were very disappointed. They're like, Phil, you have nothing? You have nothing you can we can buy or, or have your, your stuff on it? And then so that next year, I did actually go to a website called Cafe Press. And I created a line of stuff with cool logos like this one and many others that is still live. That website still exists. You go to cafepress.com backslash darksidephil. You're going to see not only stuff with me, but also stuff of the uh, Super Turbo Revolution from years ago. Remember that? Holy shit. That was, what, 2011? So Revo, ST Revo, that kind of merch is on there. And there's shirts catered to me, to John Rambo, to Howard, and everyone that was involved in the Super Turbo Revolution. You could actually get those shirts there. And uh, I'm going to be honest with everyone. These past few years, I've focused on my content. My video content on YouTube this past year, not only YouTube, but Twitch TV and the live streaming, getting the equipment working and everything. I'm not one of these shills who you see me in every video wearing my T-shirt Oh, and you should, by the way, go to my site and buy my merch. I've never been about that. And really, the primary reason I ever made merch was as fan service for people who were interested in getting it. All right? Here's the bottom line. I said this the day that I released the store in 2010. I make about a dollar per item over there. That's right. I make a dollar per item. What a lot of people do with their Cafe Press merch is they pad the pricing. So obviously a t-shirt with my name on it should cost, what, 15, 17 bucks at the most? They'll make it 25 bucks. So every time that you buy a shirt, they make seven bucks. I've never done that. I basically make the minimum amount of profit possible on every piece of merch that was ever on that website. Now, I haven't mentioned this website, I think, in over a year now. Probably the last time is when someone asked me about it on Ask the King. It's been quite some time. So that website has cobwebs on it. It's still there. It's still up and running and functional. You can still buy stuff. And by the way, it's international. It ships worldwide, and it even calculates your shipping cost for you right on the website. But I don't talk about it because that's not the kind of person I am. You never see me trying to sell you this or sell you that or sell you this or sell you that. I want to give you free and entertaining content and you watch it. And by watching it, you pay me back. And that's the that's the relationship we've always had. So that's why I'm not like that. Same reason why I'm not the kind of person who here on Twitch TV, I'm begging for donations constantly. I'm not. I want to earn my living. So by all means, you want to laugh, head over to cafepress.com backslash darksidephil. Look at the ancient merchandise that's there. That's still readily available for purchase. So if you ever wanted to buy something, you could. But just know I make almost nothing on it. It's more for your benefit than mine. Okay. Okay. Next question is from. Here we go. Uh, Finn Unit. And his question is as follows Phil, as you've stated recently, you're looking to move out of Connecticut sometime this year. Funny how all these questions are very related. Obviously, you'll be looking to sell your condo after you find a new place. <clears throat> My question is, when do you plan on painting the other half of your half-painted wall? You can see it behind me right now, that the wall does not match the two sides. Uh, are there any other repairs that you plan on doing before you move out? This place needs a lot of work, all right? First of all, when I take down the paint, you can probably see this little bit of the painting right here. These paintings, I attach to the wall using uh, 
sticky adhesive uh, squares. They're like foam squares with adhesive on the sides. They're supposed to be removable. They are not. And I know because there's a couple of these that I've tried to take down. Right here, I've got this one of CM Punk. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually big, big missing pieces of the wall here. You could probably not really see it that well in the video. But it took the freaking wall off. It actually ripped part of the wall off when I went to take these paintings down. All right? So, obviously what that means is that there's going to be some big problems when I go to move and I take all this stuff down. It's going to rip the walls off. So I'm going to have to have some minor patch-up work done to all the walls. Yes, the whole place will need a coat of paint. I'm probably going to have to have a professional come in here and clean the rugs. Um, just the whole place is going to need a once-over. Now, the appliances still work. Those I'm going to leave. I'm not going to have to improve those at, at all. The bed's going. The bed's coming with me because that's relatively new. I've had it for less than two years. So that's going to go with me. So there will be no bed here. Um... Some things I may be leaving, like computer desks and stuff. I don't think that stuff would even be worth it to try to get it across the country in one piece. Uh, but yeah, this is going to need some work. I'm sure there's going to need some improvements, some touch-up jobs. The bedroom has that shit popcorn ceiling that's like from the 1980s. Maybe I'll have someone fix that and change it to something more modern so it's more appealing. One cool advantage that I have is that I do have this bar unit. You guys saw it. You, can't, you probably can't see it anymore. But I used to have this bar unit where, you know, people could sit and eat and have drinks or whatever. And that's custom made. No other units in this condo facility have that. That was custom made for this unit when I, uh, it was meant to sell. But the bottom line is this. It's bad news, unfortunately. I've looked at all the listings of people selling units in this condo. They're all listed for or selling at prices lower than what I paid for this condo when it was new. So basically, my unit has depreciated in value since I bought it. And it's actually looking to me like when I sell this condo later this year, if I even can sell it later this year, I may be stuck with it and be paying two mortgages for a while, that uh, I may have to sell it for less than what I owe the bank, which means I have to significantly dip it to my savings to pay off the balance of the mortgage just to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I know it's ridiculous, that's the situation I'm in living in Connecticut. It sucks dick. I've even looked into renting this place, and I found out that the average rental income, I think, is like just over $1,000 for a unit like this, $1,000 a month. I found out that the my mortgage, my current mortgage payment, plus the fees for the condo association are more than that. So if I were to rent this place, I'd be, I'd be losing money every month that I'm renting it, plus I'd have legal responsibility to fix things that go wrong, like a leaky pipe, or a problem with the bathroom, I'd have to have someone come fix it, and I'm already losing money, so why the hell would I keep it? So, unfortunately, th this condo was great for when it lasted. It was a great bachelor pad for a few years, right? It served my purposes to being able to record whenever I wanted to with no interruptions for filming of certain series and stuff, but it's run its course, and it's done. I need to get out of here, and I need to just, if I have to take a loss to sell it, I have to take a loss to sell it. I need to get the fuck out of here and move on with my life. Okay. Oh, real quick one from at last, at last the layman. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, or maybe at, Atlas, Atlas Telemann. There you go. That's how you say his name. And he says, will you keep your couch? The famous couch when you, when you move, I'd hate to see it go. Well, I hate to say it too, but this baby... She's seen her time come and go. This couch is worn out, right? The cushion I'm sitting on right now, which is the cushion I do vlogs on, is super sunken in and low to the couch because I sit on it more than anything else. This is where I sit when I game. This is where I sit when I do vlogs. This is where I sit when I do everything. The couch is worn the hell out. It's dirty. It needs to go. So when I move, there will be no more brown couch, but there's going to be a whole new setup. I'll probably be doing stuff from my new office. Maybe I'll be doing stuff from my living room. Who knows what I'll be doing? But it's going to be a new, fun, different experience, okay? All right, next question. This is a funny one. This one just blows me away. Where do you hear this question? This question is from Golden Boy Mikey, and he asks the following. <clears throat> Phil, I have two questions if you don't mind. One is easy enough. Will you be attending too many games or Screwtack Gaming Convention again this year? Well, I'll answer that one very quickly. I don't know. Too many games may be off the table because I don't know if you guys have heard about last year at Too Many Games. Didn't go too well. Now, if you remember in 20, 
12, we went to too many games. We were the featured guests along with the Angry Video Game Nerd. We were like the two highlighted featured guests. And we both had panels that were very successful. Lots of people turned out to see me. Of course, way more went to see the Video Game Nerd because that was his hometown of Philadelphia. But it was great. It was a great experience and the people were great to us. Last year, too many games decided to hold their event the week of E3. Now, I don't think it was their fault. I think E3 actually changed the week that it took place. And therefore, if I went to too many games, it would have conflicted with E3. At that point, I didn't know if I was going to be able to go to E3 or not. There was a possibility that Machinima might have been able to get me out there like they did in 2012. And uh, so I had to turn it down. And I said, he actually invited me. The, the owners of too many games invited me to be a featured guest again. And I had to turn him down. I said, unless you could change the dates, that's too much of an important week for me. And... Uh, I don't know if anyone's uh, went to too many games last year or heard, but basically attendance was in the toilet. Uh, almost no one went. The Basically the only people that went were the people who were fans of the Angry Video Game Nerd, and that was it. I actually know because Carol Ann, who is OJ's girlfriend, half of Athena's Wink, had a table there, and she says they sold like nothing. They took a massive loss being at too many games in 2013 because no one went. Now, I feel bad, obviously, because at least if I had gone, I would have had a draw of the people who were local who wanted to see me, but it didn't work out. And if you remember, the week after was SGC, so we actually attended SGC, uh, which was very successful. So, too many games, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's a big ordeal for us to get out to these events, um, and I don't know if it would be worth it if, if really attendance is that bad. I don't know if there's enough interest for us to go. All right. In addition to that, this year I'm cutting back dramatically on travel because this year I'm going to be traveling the country visiting locations like Florida and Texas and the Seattle area to see if there are potential homes in those areas. I've actually already sent out emails to realtors in different areas of the country and they're very gradually getting back to me and sending me stuff to look at on the web and my, my plan is that later this year I'm going to take a series of trips to these areas to actually go house hunting and to see what's available in these areas. So if I'm doing that, that means I'm spending all my money on that. I don't have money to go traveling and going to all these conventions or whatever. So if I do go to a convention, it's only going to be one. And we had so much fun at Screw Attack Gaming Convention last year that we'd really like to maybe make that our one convention for 2014. I'm not 100% saying it's going to be. In fact, I'm curious. I'm going to really live here go and see if their website has even been updated yet. Let me see here. SGConvention.com. Aha! Uh -huh. They have finally made the the uh, the website. It took a while, uh, but it's up. It looks like it just went up. And I'm actually curious. Um. Wait a minute. These are all pictures from SGC. No, it says buy tickets and book hotel. It looks like you can now get stuff. Vendors, volunteer, and schedule. Schedule is probably going to be blank. Yep. Yeah, in fact, the website's pretty bare bones. There's, like, nothing on the website yet. I think they just brought it up to have be a placeholder. <clears throat> so, uh... So, yeah. Now, I have absolutely... Last year, we were... Last year, we were lucky enough to be invited guests to SGC. Now, keep in mind, that was the first time they had SGC in quite some time. I think they were looking for a, a group of people for a wide variety of places to draw in attendees. So I have no idea if we're going to be re-invited this year. Obviously, what I would need to do is probably contact uh, Stuttering Craig and whoever again to see if they would have us back as guests. Um, I loved doing the Iron Man of Gaming. I have no idea if they're going to be doing the Iron Man of Gaming this year. It doesn't say on the website yet. But if I did one convention, that would probably be the major one that I would want to do. All right. So if anything, that's the one that has the most chance. But that being said, I have no idea because, like I said, I may be house hunting a lot this year and I may not be able to do any conventions. We'll have to see what happens, okay? All right, so now the second part of Golden Boy Mikey's question, which is the funny part that I wanted to get to. He says, second question is this. I stayed away from your work for a good while due to the fact that I was always told, wait till you hear this, don't support Phil because he's anti-gay. And he funds anti-gay foundations. <laughs> huh? Now, before I even go to the rest of the question. Where could anyone get any kind of evidence to support that I'm anti-gay and that I, so I actually fund anti-gay, you know, foundations? What? That is incredibly ridiculous. That is, I mean, 
wow. The ridiculous amount of misinformation about me on the internet, it's just unfounded. The bullshit that people spew out of their mouths about me, I can't believe that someone actually stayed away from me believing that, all right? So let me continue. After watching your content, I can't see any signs of this. I hear the occasional gay joke in your playthroughs, but you're not doing it with malice or hate. Just joking for fun, which I actually do myself. So, some of the stereotypes in the culture are easily hilarious to make fun of. Uh, I saw your huge announcement video, and I understand that people say false stuff about you all the time. But as a gay fan, I just want to ask from the source. Is there any truth to this gay hate accusation, or is it all bullshit? I hope it's bullshit, because I really enjoy your content, and it makes me laugh, even the gay jokes. Yeah, anyone who watches my content. All right. And doesn't just watch the, maybe, okay, if the only video you ever watched had a big gay joke in it, sure, take it out of frame of reference, maybe you think I'm a bigot or something, you know, or I hate, uh, you know, homosexuals, that's not the, the, the case at all. I am an equal opportunity jokester. You'll see in my videos that I will joke about everything. I'll joke about Asians, I'll joke about Mexicans, I'll joke about Middle Eastern people, I'll joke about white people, I'll joke about black people, I'll joke about gays, I'll joke about women, I'll joke about everything. Because that's comedy. Comedy is like you're not always harping on the same thing. It's when you always harp on the same thing that you can tell that maybe there's a little nugget of truth behind what someone's saying. But I think if you watch the, 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 the videos that I put out, there's never some kind of a ringing pattern of me consistently doing the same stuff. Now, sure, it's funny to watch Cortez do funny stuff in Mass Effect 3 and me be like, oh, no, Cortez is after me. It's funny because, you know, I'm a straight dude. I'm not anti-gay. I just think it's funny to joke about stuff. And... Obviously, what's happened here is what's happened with a lot of stuff. Oh, I need to slander Phil's name because I don't like him, or I'm mad at him because he insulted me in, at some point, or he's really changed this year. He's all about negativity, so let me destroy his name, right? Instead of ignoring the person you don't like, let's destroy him. And that's what they did. They spread all this misinformation. I'm sure people out there say that I'm racist, I'm sexist, I'm anti-gay, uh, you know, I hate dogs, uh, Martians are dicks. And I'm all only about the money. I hate my fans. I hate people who who subscribe to me. I don't I don't give back. I'm not appreciative. I got an ego the size of Mount Rushmore. And in all of that, there may be again a nugget of truth here or there. But those ridiculously overgeneralized statements are preposterous. And I challenge anyone, I do, to actually take shit in context. And then tell me that I'm anything like that. Because I'm not. I have friends of every race, creed, and sexual denomination. I always have and I always will. I'm completely open-minded. The person who actually was the uh, the head admin of my fan site, thekingofhate.com, was, uh, uh, you know, was gay. And she just recently resigned because of some stuff going on in her life. But I don't have a problem. Like, people are ridiculous to say this shit. It's so unfounded but no there's no truth to any of that bullshit you will have i will always have people slandering my name for the rest of my life because of the kind of public figure that i am and i'm a very vocal public figure people are going to take this clip from this video and take it out of context or they'll take this clip and then they'll play one joke that was a gay joke and say see phil really does hate gays because that's what people do when they're petty and they're little people they have to fucking insult people who are, have the kind of reach and the span and the scope of the voice that I have and the people who love to watch my content. So I apologize, sir, if you took it the wrong way, if you thought I was anti-gay in any way. I'm not. I'm not bigoted in any way or prejudiced or biased in any way like that. So I hope this has clarified the situation. Whew. Okay. Um, let's see here. We've got time for one more question, and then we're going to take a break, okay? <clears throat> All right. And this is a long one, but I'm going to try to get through it quickly because I have a very concise opinion about it. Okay, this question is from Hazard. Hazard returns to Ask the King with another pertinent question. He says, hey, Phil, with the treatment of female characters in gaming becoming now a topic of discussion within the YouTube gaming community, community recently, thanks to the likes of Anita Sarkezi, or Sarkeesian, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her name, uh, in her kickstarted series Tropes vs. Women in Video Games, I can't help but notice a distinct lack of main female characters in most blockbuster games and films. <clears throat> also, when there are female main characters, they often lack significance for their own merit, only having significance because maybe they're the love interest of a main or title character, or... I, can, I understand what he's saying. 
Uh, then he goes on and he says, Don't get me wrong, I understand the nature of demographics, and I understand the need to market games for a certain audience and design the game for, uh, for that audience from the very beginning. However, the most important thing to me when it comes down to it is that it has an excellently written story regardless of the gender of the characters. A game with a female main character is no less appealing to me than a male main character, and as such, I'd love to see more games designed with a female character in mind while avoiding shoehorning in female characters, you know, jamming them into the plot just for the sake of being politically correct. I was wondering whether you had any thoughts on the matter, being as you are someone who primarily enjoys story above all else in a video game. All right. Now, I don't know anything about the series uh, Tropes versus Women in Video Games. As everyone knows, I've said this since the day I started. I'm too busy with my own stuff to watch other people's videos, so I don't know nothing about this series. I don't know if it's good or bad. I hope it's good. Um, here's my feeling on the matter. And I've, I've actually talked about this previously, but I have some interesting takes on it now from recent happenings in, in the video game world. Um, video games primarily were seen as a geeky, nerdy thing for males. Really. At the beginning of, of the whole video game culture, that's what it was. Geeky, nerdy dudes will play these games, and it's for, for just for male demographic. Then, of course, it evolved. Oh, well, now it's starting to become a more popular thing. So it's for the male demographic, but now it's not geeky or nerdy anymore. Now it's violent and bloody. So then the game started moving into more violent first-person shooters. Games like Mortal Kombat, things like that. Oh, it's all about male-dominated violence and, and that kind of stuff. But recently, I'd say the past five years, we've finally seen a shift where games are changing and they're becoming way different than they used to be. Now, if you actually take the demographics of people who play games, you'll find that females are actually at the all-time high for their percentage of the, of the pie of females who are playing video games. And I think it's, for, for first of all, obviously it's because everyone's on this thing. Everyone's playing their mobile games, women, men, everyone. So obviously, when everyone owns one of these and everyone's playing a mobile game, they count that into the statistic. But I don't think it's just that. I actually think it's the fact that we've had more adult-oriented stories, games that are trying to reach new artistic heights, games with serious plot lines with characters that it doesn't matter what sex they are. They're, it's, you're there for the character and the story. You're not there because there's a girl with giant heaving titties. You know what I mean? Um, and it is sad because in previous... I mean, think of, the, think of popular female characters over the years in video games. Samus Aran, who you never saw because she was in a robot suit, so it could have been a dude, you know? It's regardless of, of what the, they tell you was in the suit, Samus Aran was, like, covered up. Anyone who was, like, a female lead was, like, Princess Toadstool or Peach. Oh, the victim complex, always getting kidnapped, not a very strong character. When you had a strong female lead, oh, Lara Croft and Tomb Raider. By the way, look at the size of her fucking huge tits. It's ridiculous. And it was like, well, if you're going to have a strong female protagonist, she has to be a sex pot, and you know, because that'll appeal to the dudes. And it's like, you get to the point where you get fed up. And I have to say, in recent years, games like Mass Effect, where your main character can be female. You can make her look however you want. She doesn't have to have giant fucking titties. The fact that the game has strong female lead characters that you have the choice whether or not you want to romance right you don't have to and those characters are there for the story not because they're just your romantic interest so that series in particular i think was a huge advancement when it comes to females having leading roles in games and not being there just for sexual preference or to be a love interest and stuff like that what about the reboot of Tomb Raider, where the main character looks like a real freaking woman, and she's a badass. She goes out, she can fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the guys in the game, right? These are just a few small examples. Recently, you had games such as The Last of Us. One of the main characters is this girl who becomes extremely self-reliant and resilient, and even though, yeah, there's a little bit of a victim complex because she is a girl, but she fights back. She actually kills people. There's crazy things in the story that happens where she's an incredibly strong, believable character. Or what about Jody from Beyond Two Souls? The whole game's about this girl who her whole life's struggling with this supernatural ability. She gets trained to become a main character. And of course, yes, they have to have the typical, oh no, she's going to try to romance the dude, but she's not a sex pot. She's not half naked for the game. She's a believable female character. So what I think is happening is that as game developers are making games, they're realizing now, if we're going to become more artistic, if we're going to become the next level, and we really want to be taken seriously, we have to get rid of that sexist bullshit stereotype from the past. We have to escape from that. Because, yeah, we made our money in the 90s doing that, right? In the early 2000s. 
but it's time to put that behind us. And it's time for us to move forward and realize it's more about equality. It's more about strong female leads. I'm hoping we're going to see a lot more games with strong female leads. And I think that they're actually, in a lot of ways, entertaining. Even more entertaining. Because I'm tired of games about this big, roided dude. And I am the superhero. And I can do unbelievable feats because I'm a man and I fight and I'm tough, big macho bullshit. It gets to the point where when every game's like that, you don't care anymore, you know? So, uh, so yeah, at least in that regard, I think we're heading in the right direction. We have seen some change recently that's positive, and I'm hoping that this pattern's going to continue, all right? Okay, it's time for another break. If you're watching this on Twitch TV, I'll be back in a few short minutes. If you're watching this on YouTube, just jump right ahead to part three. We got way more questions to get to. I'm hoping we can do it, wrap it all up in one more part, plus the live Q&A session. So we'll be right back with hopefully the conclusion of Ask the King episode 40. Don't go anywhere.